namaste welcome back to the course on geographic information systems now let's uh, uh, see about the module 8 uh, i would be speaking about i'll continue the database systems but i'll uh, this module is very specifically designed for everyone to understand how do you actually create maintain edit and how well you can use a database what are the different types of database how the querying can be done what how basically uh, there are certain issues that you can uh, address when you are creating a database though I will give a very common uh, issues that has to be addressed but it, it would be more uh, intact uh, but it is not the over the queries that you may have during uh, your uh, operations with the database. So, let us uh, as far as this I will be very much corner to understand it with uh, MS Access. I will give you some uh, some introduction with the MS Excel, but uh, more uh, uh, ways of how a database can be created, how you can modify in terms of MS uh, Access. So, my, uh, Microsoft Access is one of those uh, very good systems where, where you can handle your database very efficiently. So, there are many other systems, but uh, I would be showing you uh, about the Microsoft Access. So, in today's class, we would first uh, just revise what do we mean by a database management system and how a relational database management system works. Then we would uh, look at what is Excel first, then look at what is MS Access, how MS Access, the Microsoft Access is uh, useful for uh, analysis then uh, planning and designing a database. So, how do we plan a database, how do we design a database, what are the necessities that you need uh, to in order to uh, design a database. Then we would look at operations, data op base operations, how will we how will we do a database operations. Then very important concepts of compacting, repairing and encrypting which is uh, which may be important. Encrypting is very important in today's scenario wherein it would help you in uh, storing your database in much, uh, with uh, much more uh, security. Then the last part is how do you secure your database. So, that is that is also another uh, thing that we have to learn so that uh, we are up to date with whatever uh, things that we have to build it with the database. Now, so as I uh, as I previously defined a database is just a computerized database management system is just an a computerized application that helps you to store, retrieve, analyze, sort and print information yeah, that is stored in the database you have data that is stored in the database or in a form of a database that have that application database management system is application that can help you retrieve, analyze, sort and print ok. And also in, in case uh, if, if you have very big database it also helps you in grouping the data in much easier way. So, when you look at DBMS data is basically stored in a table that looks very similar to a normal spreadsheet. So, most of you would have seen Excel, very basic Excel or let us say a mathemat uh, mathematics uh, handwriting book ok, wherein you have numerical mathematics book wherein you write 1, 2, 3, 4, it is a similar kind of uh, sheet that is there uh, in the database management system ok. In columns heading is the field names and the columns are called fields. When you are handling a database columns that when you say columns these are the vertical uh, 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 vertical uh, boxes that are called columns whereas rows are called records these are horizontal boxes. So, when you uh, when you look at a normal spreadsheet uh, you have something like this right. If you have a square box your spreadsheet is something like this. So, when you are looking at this these are called records record 1, record 2, record 3, record 4 and so on whereas, this is called field 1, field 2, field 3 ok. So, this is how a basic database, uh, database uh, structure is ok exactly like excel if you have seen excel it is exactly like an excel, excel also is an uh, good, uh, uh, good application in order to create a database. And uh, when you are looking at uh, 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 relational database management system, this enables user to manipulate data in most sophisticated way. This we have discussed how sophisticated it is without data redundancy. 
this is extremely important i gave an example of an hospital and uh, the records and the police so that uh, is how it avoids the redundancy so it gives you different tables and specific tables have specific connections only specific people can access it so that's how it gives you uh, it can easily quickly access the data and most importantly it removes the data redundancy in your database so this is achieved uh, how uh, when you look at data redundancy it is because of the relationship between the sets of data or it is be, uh, based on relationship between the data and the sets of data okay the relationship is common field such as a student matriculation number or course number or when we were looking at that patient it's a patient id which is the common uh, uh, relation and and even the license number can be your common uh, relationship uh, number that's actually uh, 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 looking at all the entire database. The data is then each stored in is retrieved updated based on data in the other data set other set also ok. So which means to say that if there is a small change in other set which is reflecting it to your main database so there will be a change in the entire space if uh, they are dependent ok. So just to give you an example of a relationship between a student and courses this is how the relational database uh, is ok. So just, just a very very basic uh, example of how a relationship between a student and course. So you have a course id that is uh, linked to uh, how many number of uh, students have been enrolled. So uh, then uh, again the course id is again linked uh, with the metric which tells you that what is the title, what is the first name, what is the last name and uh, any other details that are of a student that is necessary ok. So the course id is then, uh, then you can have again you can have specific uh, a table where again with the course id and representing number of students uh, so and uh, what is the average of the class, what is the highest of the class, lowest of the class all of this can be uh, based on the uh, course id itself. So this gives you uh, a chain of how relational database management actually works. So let us uh, start with the first application that is excel. Most of you would have known but if you do not know please uh, just go back have uh, just google it out uh, to just uh, see what is a microsoft excel ok. When I say excel worksheet uh, these, these are basically a worksheets or it is just for, uh, I, I can say it as a mathematical tables ok. We can do mathematical, statistical, any kind of analytical uh, uh, issues it can look at qualitative data it can hold any number of data into those sheets. There, there are infinite number of sheets until your uh, virtual memory is almost done otherwise you have infinite number of sheets you can uh, look at uh, storing different uh, data in different sheets access different data at different point of time. So excel is one which can give you both quantitative information visualization also look at analytical numerical part of analysis for of that particular uh, data that you ha would have collected. Now, Excel worksheets are extremely suitable uh, uh, and can be opened as tables in QGIS or any of the GIS software. So now uh, Excel see once you have collected data you can put either in Excel or Microsoft access or in any, any of those sheets which can actually handle even you have lot of open office uh, stuff also uh, for example when if you have an open office stuff that is also stored as similar to that of an Excel and is a good option alternative to uh, what Excel is. So now once you have stored it in the form of Excel so you have collected data from the field maybe let us say that someone one of my uh, student has gone and collected all the temperature data from the field. So he used the laser gun, laser temperature sensing gun to collect some of the surface temperatures. So he comes back, once he comes back he, uh, he knows uh, be because of the GPS location he knows where exactly he has collected the data and also he knows certain attribute information that he would have collected and also using those sensors he would have collected the temperature uh, data also. So now he comes back he puts it in the excel sheets. So you have uh, the name of the place, you have temperature sense, the lat long, uh, x y values and any other attribute stuff that is corrected. So that is nothing but a sheet, it is just like your paper that is printed in a uh, number of boxes. So most functions that involve changing the file will work as far as excel is concerned that is sorting, querying etc. 
tables cannot be changed or edited once it is uh, performed okay so when when you look at excel file there are certain requirements for it to be uh, in order if you want to import it as a as a attribute data into your database now the first row must contain field headings with a legal field name as defined earlier so i'll i'll tell you what are those uh, legal file uh, field names so when i say field names these have to be in maximum of 13 characters and this the the uh, characters and this field name cannot have uh, only numerical or only uh, it, it can have words it can have partly numerical partly words and these headings have to be sufficient length so that it is easily identifiable so you cannot have uh, no blank rows or formulas that should be used each column should contain only text or only numbers okay so the keep that in mind if you are defining a data if it's a qualitative data put it in qualitative form if it is quantitative data put it in quantitative form but make sure that either it is number or new or it is um, text you can you cannot combine both okay if you are if you are finding out whether it is a red or a uh, blue color that you have uh, looked at in the field in different locations now i it should be red should be one and blue should be zero or it should be r or b okay so either one of these contexts has to be uh, used when you are actually entering into the database it is helpful for uh, each column to be formatted as text or numeric so keep that in mind normally it I, you have you can format it ba basically when you uh, you are looking at that particular thing so when you are when the excel sheet some looks something like this uh, so you have uh, columns that are formatted as text or numeric so if you look at this these are all numeric this is the field name okay both uh, in x and y and if you look at these are uh, most of them are numeric forms okay so you cannot have in the first line uh, that is the first column and the first row you cannot have any blank lines no formulas basically you cannot use a formula in the first lines okay and uh, try to avoid having formulas here so that and if there are certain formulas it can be worked out in other excel sheet and copy pasted as numerals here okay and always have a legal field name okay do not uh, use uh, field names that may not be more uh, understandable so and when you normally enter I would suggest that most of them enter it in the form of a decimal degrees so whenever you go to uh, field uh, normally you collect the data or when you are looking at any of the applications it is deg uh, degree minutes and seconds so if if it if you have to convert it into degree deci uh, deg uh, decimal degrees or degree decimals so it is as simple as this you have a degree so add minutes by 60 plus seconds by 3600 so combining all this is nothing uh, gives you degree uh, the same reading in a degree decimals so i would suggest that most of uh, the most of the things that would be entered here would be in degree decimals it would uh, it would rather give you more effective way of usage of that database rather than uh, any uh, any of the other uh, forms where there may be certain confusions when you are actually picking up the da data from the database then uh, uh, workbooks and worksheets so this is a concept that uh, excel uses so when you, when you look at this if you look at this is one of the excel sheets uh, so these are number of fields this is the field 1 field 2 and field 3 and when you are looking at uh, this i have just taken this as an example okay so this is uh, if you look at this all of these three are there are three different fields but if you look at here there are three sheets normally when you open excel sheet normally uh, in the previous versions it used to be three different sheets would open but in the newer versions uh, uh, two sheets open at, at a time okay so uh, when you look at these are called as worksheets one worksheet two worksheet three okay this entire book is called as nothing but an workbook okay so whatever you have this is called as a workbook now uh, when you look at excel excel actually sh stores either in two formats you have the older format which is dot, uh, dot xls and the newer format is dot xls x okay other than that you can even store it in dot csv form okay 
uh, so comma separated value format which which would be much easier for importing in many of the GIS softwares okay by uh, default there are uh, three name sheets as I said uh, there may be one or more named worksheets so always I would suggest everyone who start looking at worksheets you are storing data for example the first data is about uh, different recording stations the next the worksheet is about temperature next the worksheet is about rainfall so keep the name of the worksheet much easier because when you open your application okay and try to import these worksheets it uh, when you open up that workbook it it doesn't mean it doesn't take in all the data that is there in the workbook it takes worksheet by worksheet so which means to say that if there is a worksheet by name uh, rainfall only that worksheet is considered for your analysis first next you can retrieve the temperature worksheet similarly so it is easier if rather than having sheet 1 sheet 2 sheet 3 which you may not remember as uh, whether it is temperature rainfall data so it is better to always rename the worksheet so that it's easier to access gs cost software can only open one worksheet at a time that's what i explained and uh, when you are when you are opening a workbook it's like normally like a folder so in a folder you can use uh, one file you can open one file at a time okay and uh, select a single box sheet okay so i hope everyone has understood how uh, and the data is stored in excel and how uh, we can actually access uh, the worksheets now uh, let's go into microsoft access so i have just given a, sim a small uh, introduction to excel when we start looking at data uh, uh, in one of those uh, classes you may look at how do you use and extract data for your analysis so uh, using an excel sheet so let's look at ms access so microsoft access uh, is a relational database application in Microsoft Office Professional. So, if you uh, if you have used any of the Office uh, that's uh, Office after Office 2003, the Microsoft Access is extremely developed as as a compact relational database management application uh, in the Microsoft package. So, uh, before we uh, ac uh, understand uh, explore ourselves, we should understand that database and also we should review some of the very basic database concepts so otherwise you will not be able to understand access so in case you guys have uh, uh, i mean uh, have forgotten some of the database concepts what is a relational database how it works etc though i've given an introduction in this class please go back just have a look at that particular video and then uh, understand uh, how uh, how microsoft access works it will be easy for you to just organize it uh, in a much better way a database is an organized collection of information okay so our data data that is processed as information a telephone directory is a good example of a database so i am most of you at least uh, in my uh, uh, this uh, people have seen uh, what is a uh, what is a telephone directory i don't know whether with the advent of mobile phones if uh, you guys have looked at what's a telephone directory but if you can come across please look at a telephone directory it has a extensive information so with just a telephone uh, you could have tracked the uh, person's address and a lot of other issues but it is ex uh, you should appreciate the way the telephone directory used to be built it, uh, it is extremely uh, good in terms of having uh, a collection of telephone numbers even today you can access a uh, telephone directory using uh, google search as b2b if you just uh, search uh, you would uh, you would find you would probably find uh, uh, the telephone numbers of your house and also uh, your friend's house so that's extremely good so if you can uh, uh, really get an hold on what are the old telephone directories you will love looking at it because it's it's one of the best databases that anyone can come across so this this a very good practice of uh, developing a hard data database that used to be there earlier now it's more of having a digital data okay so uh, when you are looking at your computer your computer has many applications which each uh, each and every day accomplish your particular work so knowing when access instead of excel is important is very necessary when you are looking at the database point of view okay so not that every time you need to uh, take up excel uh, in order to have a database ready or nor you should always take up access for your database so look at why you need access and why do you need excel 
now i did show you that excel is one of those applications which can actually populate all your data that you have collected from the database now you once you have uh, populated that in the excel excel cannot really develop a database engine by default so it, it cannot look at the database system it cannot look at the database management whereas access can look at the database management so you can have data in excel whereas look at looking at the database management can be done by microsoft access so these that's why you have two applications instead of one okay so uh, uh, re, uh, when you are looking at the database the most important is store a collection of information or process information or collection of data so that is exactly why you need access okay so for example you have student attendance system student marks library uh, systems uh, customer records invoicing systems product inventory so when you are looking at all of these so whether it is student att attendance system library system invoicing or any of these uh, uh, things the uh, uh, the main emphasis is on data collection than calculation right if it was on calculation for example student marks yeah, if you want to store uh, let's say there it's two two things if if you are just storing it has student marks is okay student marks is 65 overall on 100 let us say so this is a overall marks you don't need to do any calculations but if you are looking at the midterm exam then the take home exam then you have the final exam then you have presentations surprise test so all of these have certain marks associated with it so you want to calculate the final marks out of all of these then you need an excel whereas here it is only collection of data which student has how much marks that's all so that's the difference between an excel and an access fine so that's access is more of a data collection and management whereas excel is for calculations it can also do the collection part but is my emphasis is, is more on calculations and maintenance okay so when you are looking at uh, database uh, most of the database can perform uh, databases can perform statistical calculations by themselves but it doesn't calculate as fast as a spreadsheet or an excel sheet that is why you need excel okay so if you want to calculate basically or look at cal uh, uh, statistical uh, information then you need excel otherwise uh, your microsoft access would help in database management so the next question is okay so now i understand what uh, access is more of uh, uh, collecting data then so final data then storing it in the database etc but excel is more of a the calculative stuff uh, like a statistical analytical issues that it can look at but again when do we use access so now you know the difference between two softwares but you don't know what when do you use access so you need to use access when you want to organize data into manageable related units okay so enter modify and locate data for example you have a lot of information that is a lot of information processed information and lot of data that you have collected so you have to actually enter it modify it locate it when you are looking at excel you, you will not be able to locate the information that is uh, or relational information that is already existing whereas when you are looking at access uh, it is more of in, how do you enter how do you modify how do you locate data locate data is extremely important in terms of uh, microsoft access then extract subsets of data so now i give you an example of a hospital and then a policeman so policeman doesn't need the details of that uh, what a doctor needs whereas a doctor doesn't need the details of what the policeman is so you need to have a subset of data so create subsets of data can be easily done using access so uh, the specific uh, data user will be given only certain access and others will uh, be curtailed with the access of that, those data which are unnecessary okay then create custom forms and reports this is a very important point at the end of the day you need uh, custom forms custom reports in order to uh, generate the final output then look uh, look at automating common database tasks which is uh, very very important in today's world its automation is the major important aspect when you are looking at the task when you have a huge database uh, the, you, it, it is uh, it is not easy to maintain instead if it can automate and look at the entire database it's good 
that's why you need to use access and today's uh, if you look at to the microsoft office 2019 is extremely useful in terms of uh, giving you uh, good uh, 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 software package in terms of microsoft access then you can create graphs when i say graphs even excel can do it but you can create it more visually linked to the uh, data that is running behind then you can create your own database application this is very important this is what it majorly differs from excel you can create your own database application complete the custom menus then uh, look at the dialog box and the command button so most importantly you can build an overall uh, application in terms for uh, in terms of user interface for an user who would be using that data and the database effectively then when you are looking at the entire access database you have different components of an access database um, in access the term database refers to a single flat file okay or single file that contains a collection of information so each access database con uh, consists of the different objects when you look at objects it can be tables it can be queries it can be forms it can be reports pages groups macros modules okay i'll come to each of these i'll show you how you access each of these in uh, uh, your uh, uh, microsoft access i'll give you some examples of it so when you look at uh, pages and groups will not be looked at uh, uh, when when you are looking at uh, this we will we'll look at what what all uh, how these things mean but i am not going into details of what do you mean by different pages how do you maintain groups how do you populate group how how the groups are combined so i'll just give you a flavor of what a table means what a query means how do you create a query how do you create a table what are different forms why you should use a form queries etc so but i would not go into details dive details into pages and groups okay but uh, we would look at different components so when we uh, when you are looking at excel so if you open up excel and click on create uh, a new database uh, so this particular thing opens so the, once you say you create a new database you have to uh, provide it with a name okay so once you have provided with the, with the name uh, you can you get this particular interface so if you click on this it will give you different uh, parts of an application okay whether you want to look at the contacts you want to look at issue you want to look at task you want to look at uh, users etc then the next tab is nothing but tables this is uh, it it actually is exactly similar to that of an uh, spreadsheet or an excel uh, uh, sheet and it stores all the data or information you can see just behind here uh, there is a number of columns number of rows that is stored if you go and see here there is an uh, one column and one row so this is where your data is actually shown this gives you the tables okay so the next thing is macro macro is as uh, similar as that in an excel so macro is used to automate uh, your uh, common database actions okay so these are based on very specific command and developed by the users so macros are extremely very good tools that uh, microsoft has in terms of its applications and the same macros have been embedded uh, into microsoft access just to automate data uh, i mean data maintenance data uh, i mean if there is a certain calculation that has to be done and any other issues in the database that can be handled time to time macros works on it then you have query so query is one of them uh, for example when you populate your entire database let us say that there is a class of students i have the students name in my uh, 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 i mean in the rows and columns gives me their height their uh, probably uh, uh, their uh, different uh, uh, classes uh, different marks for example a uh, 10th marks 12th marks and their uh, the bachelor's marks that they they would have or undergrad marks okay so all the three marks now i want to look at uh, who in this particular student pool has scored the best i uh, is uh, consistent overall or has been scoring uh, in much a consistent way so in that time i use the for the uh, this particular uh, 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 thing called as query okay so what does query do it extracts data from the table so the first thing is if i say if uh, the query is 10th uh, 10th uh, marks equal to 12th marks equal to 
the B marks or in the range of these marks okay then say uh, it is yeah it is let's say group 1 otherwise if it's more or less or it is too less make it group 2 if if it is not equivalent very very variable then make it group 3 that is my query so that queries enable us to view fields from more than one table in the same record so if you have 10 different tables in a relational database so you can extract all the information from those by just a usage of query only thing is that you should know what are the different fields or columns that are there or the attribute information that is already embedded into the database the next thing is forms forms this displays the data from the table or query based on the user defined in the custom format okay it, it is based on the user the how i need what kind of data output i need that is how the forms uh, uh, are displaying so the forms enable us to view edit and print data basically edit and print data okay a, a form can display information from more than one table or a query it can that's what uh, most of the database operations do so when you look at the next tab it is reports that is here okay so what does basically reports do this display and uh, prints uh, data from the table or query based on user defined custom format okay again it's based on the user so everyone has their own way of uh, printing it so uh, it is based on the user on how the uh, this particular uh, thing has to print it one, only one very different thing is from the format uh, forms is that report cannot be edited it, okay it, it will be in the locked format and it will be printed as it is reports can contain information for more than one table or queries you can have any number of queries all queries will be processed based on the availability of information and that will be given you as an output okay so there is no limit in today's context of computing there is absolutely no limitations of queries nor limitations of time whereas previously you could have got something as timed out and uh, certain errors but in today's uh, computing capacity absolutely there is no uh, rules or uh, limitations in terms of this the reports reports also again are uh, automate complex operations that macros cannot uh, perform you can again have this then modules are procedures written in visual basics for application programming languages so you will have different modules for uh, developing that uh, particular thing that is module is somewhere here okay so you can look at uh, how this can be changed then you have planning and designing of a database so when you are looking at uh, uh, planning and designing the first thing you have to uh, before you create any database is that first thing is plan it on first why are you building a database and what purpose that it should serve maybe after a few uh, years or few months it may take a different shape but when you are initially planning look at a long term goal and look at how uh, you have to develop the entire database the time that uh, the time taken to design will be the time spent when you create and maintain the database so when you actually design uh, the database very nicely they are, you need less time to maintain it or uh, maybe even alter it but when you are uh, if you don't uh, take a time in designing the database then your maintenance time would be extremely high in terms of uh, when uh, the database in, is in real use the focus should be basically on data the people who use the database and the tasks so the first what data you are storing how the people will look at the data what are the different groups of people who will be using that database and finally what are the tasks that uh, may be performed on this database so you have to look at it very carefully okay without looking at this don't ever create a database okay so when you are uh, if you want to create a da database there are certain key steps first thing is analyze the existing database normally when you have to do a convert it in a digital database you will normally have a manual database right in the form of a registers books etc so what you have to basically do is first analyze the data existing database and understand what are the data that are stored in different databases then take it forward so me uh, look at uh, people's uh, uh, information for example look at different users different uh, uh, people who will be looking at that particular uh, database information and in case they need certain modifications that has to be done when you are creating a database 
look at it. So plan it. Then review the database tasks to be performed such as weekly reports, data uh, exports, star sorting, data entry analysis. So most of these things has to be there when you are looking at your uh, today's scenario of uh, developing a database and uh, with daily routine. After you identify your data storage and retrieval needs. So you, you need different kinds of data storage, different ways of retrieval. So based on how you need to store your data, retrie how do you want to ret retrieve it? Each and every data has to be separated into groups of common information. Okay. Then each of these groups will be different tables. Okay. So or different worksheets. Fine. So once you have created these different worksheets, you are almost ready to start working on a database management system or developing a database management. That's a, these are the first steps of looking at how do you create a database. Okay. Then now when you are uh, determining the types of information that has to be stored in each table, uh, it may be like a stu uh, student table which may need its matriculation number, his or her, her address, date of birth, scoring information, telephone or contact number of the parents etc. So these categories of information in the tables are called as fields. So which means that every uh, worksheet will have a huge number of fields when you are, have a data. Then look for a common elements among tables or uh, workbooks. So you should look at which are the common elements. So these are called as key fields or key worksheet fields. Okay. So when you are uh, looking at this key worksheet, once you have understood what is the, what are the key worksheet fields which is actually connecting different worksheets, then look at designing forms and reports. What kind of designing you have to do? What are what are the forms that are necessary? How the reports have to be printed? Uh, is there certain format or certain styling that is necessary? Then determine the criteria for queries. So there are there may be certain queries which may not be in bound to your data. So look at what is the upper bound and the lower bound of those queries, how the query has to be done, is there certain constraints in your data. So mention those constraints, put those constraints in terms of non queryable constraints. So all of these has to be looked at. Then consider automatic, uh, automating common database tasks such as executing a query and printing a report, weekly report, monthly report, etc. Uh, yeah, make it more automatic than uh, look, uh, making it more uh, manual. Because some, uh, when the, this database is huge, it may be difficult for anyone to locate and print a particular data. Instead, uh, it can, if it's automated, it's much easier. And most importantly, look at the data security issues. In today's world, it is most of it is a data security issue. So look at uh, most of backup policies. So where you are backing up? Are the policies uh, relevant to you? Are the policies is really uh, good in terms of your data storage and data maintenance? So look at how you store the data, develop policies of data. Okay. So data sharing, if there is there, Every company has its own policy of data sharing and uh, network access. So look at the policies. For example, when uh, you would have seen in some of these slides, I have uh, uh, adapted some of the material from so, some of the uh, uh, very big uh, uh, universities. So those materials have their own. Uh, they, those materials have their own policies of data sharing. So that particular data sharing has to be given certain credits, say, which uh, which you would have seen that it is adapted from so and so uh, place. You could have seen the lower uh, footer. So that is how uh, the policies has to be looked at. And finally, the most important is network access. How good is your network access and how much data it can actually handle over a period of time. Then how do you uh, basically create a database? That's uh, I, I did say that you have to just click on this file. Okay, uh, In the older system, it may be very different. This is uh, access 2019. So you have to just uh, go to your uh, open your uh, double click on Microsoft access. So once you open it, so click on new and you can see a uh, uh, blank uh, desktop or if you have been connected to the internet, you can see a huge number of different uh, applications that can be done. Microsoft has populated it with huge number of applications, uh, pre-formatted application uh, databases. So you can even use those uh, databases. And yeah, and basically the older databases used to be stored in as MDB format. Now the uh, latest version is .accdb, okay, access database dot accdb so if if you have uh, given this name as a student student dot accdb is the extension that it will store your database into 
okay so once you have done now you can start looking at uh, this is how your microsoft access looks so you can start looking at adding tables adding objects adding information so uh, you start you can start populating your microsoft access uh, or your database okay so now once you have uh, created your database you have start uh, you have already populated your data into a database there are certain things that uh, you have to maintain a database it means to say that the first thing is backing up your database that's where the maintenance comes into effect like most of the computer data has uh, is prone to any issues or maybe uh, due to the uh, issues with the computer or the aging system so uh, they may be prone to losing critical data so always back it up uh, back it up i would uh, prefer if it's a huge database which is altering every minute uh, maybe backing every 6 hours 8 hours or even a day or uh, backing up it uh, if it's not very critical uh, database or it, it's not that database which is used frequently then probably backing up weekly or a monthly is extremely useful and uh, one only thing is that uh, it is easy because it uh, databases that here in the access part the it is stored as objects and are kept as one file and not as separate file so it's very easy to back up even with your uh, microsoft cloud which is um, uh, easy or one out one note uh, cloud cloud can easily uh, store it in much faster way then compacting a database so this uh, this another term that is normally used when the people are using the database in their daily routine the when you have to compact a database first thing is you cannot uh, compact a database when you are actually using it you have to close the database so how do you do it choose tools database utilities compact and repair database so the data database to compact from the dialog box appears whichever database you want to do it then select a database file to compact and click compact so specify the name drive and folder for a compacted database compacting is pressing it so if it is a 10 mb so you want to get it into 1 mb so you are compacting it so then click as save okay there may be certain uh, i mean due to certain operations while saving why maybe power out or any of the issues there may be repairing of uh, there may be repairing of that particular database file is necessary so it can be used uh, from the data repair of a damaged databases so it is just uh, you if you go into the repair as i previously said in the previous menu go to repairing and just simply uh, choose it as okay access uh, repairs the uh, uh, most of the damaged files so if not all so it's most of the damaged files can be repaired so uh, it uh, when you look at repairing it may be your file is damaged it may be because of some some of the other way it may be because of saving storing or maybe your system uh, the way it is there or the hard disk so it may be anything or it may be not even shutting down properly uh, so unexpected shutdown all of these gives you a, a uh, corruption issues so that can be repaired using microsoft access so 90 percent of the cases most of the database is repaired there are certain databases if uh, if it cannot be retrieved uh, then it may uh, fail in repairing the database encrypting a database so now in today's scenario you would have heard of encrypting en encrypting all your information yes it is extremely important if there is a confidential information that has to be stored okay so you you can consider using the encrypting as one of the measures so encrypting renders it unreadable by the text editor or any utility program except the microsoft access database so it has to be the same access applications with certain uh, values that it can open up that particular uh, database to run okay only access can read your data encrypted databases are slightly slower okay you can de de uh, decrypt a database anytime you need okay you don't need to uh, worry about it but you can decrypt anytime but encrypting and keeping and storing the database is always safe when you have a lot of confidential information or confidential data that has been stored okay so if you want to encrypt and decrypt these are the different ways uh, first thing is you close the database come to the main menu of access then choose tools security encrypt or decrypt the databases so uh, once you have uh, encrypted it uh, you can store it that in that particular format that uh, the encrypted format and just say okay if you want to decrypt it's the same um, uh, thing that you have to follow come back to that 
uh, particular tool then look at decrypt and you can decrypt the entire database and final thing is securing a database securing means you have to uh, put in certain uh, information without which that information you cannot access that, that database it's just like your fingerprint passport uh, password finger fingerprint or your password to access your mobile phones similarly we have to secure our databases anyone uh, with a copy access to your uh, uh, could decrypt an encrypted database so that's why encrypted database if you haven't uh, if you just have an uh, uh, access uh, version same version of the access if you have an encrypted database just plug in and uh, once you start uh, decrypting it you can decrypt the entire database so in order to avoid this you can even secure your databases okay so encryption that is with the password protection offers extremely good security there are various ways of breaching this password but as of now that's the best way so put up the best passwords which cannot be breached okay there are two ways to secure your database password and user level security user level security is normally allows you to create users with password only those users can access that particular database with other password with certain uh, levels of information the users are organized into groups who share certain rights and privileges only those privileges with those only privileges they can use it they cannot have an access to everything you have pro for example if you have looked at your uh, uh, i mean company data sheet or it may be your uh, college they uh, cert certain software certain things are only given to you whereas administrative thing is not uh, administrative access is not administrative access in your system is not given to you uh, in case you have the certain applications are not uh, working so you send in a letter to the computer administrator or you are you request your teacher to help you out so the teacher locks in as administrator unlocks it only then you will be able to look at it so only sir only certain users have certain privileges but the administrator will have the overall control or the database creator will have the overall control of the database okay so these permissions are used to control the entire database uh, objects the easiest way to secure a database is specify a password for each database so that's just, that is the best way to look at it okay so these are some of the uh, way, uh, uh, steps that you have to use it just open a database open security tab then uh, click in uh, in the password text box add a password so verify the uh, verify the password again and close it so your database would be secured enough only thing is that if you forget your password you will never be able to access the database again even if you want to so please remember that password whatever you have stored so but i would suggest uh, providing some common passwords in order to look at it so in summary we looked at, uh, at we started uh, with our class with just refreshing what do you mean by a database management system how uh, how do you actually look at a relational database then we looked at what is uh, excel how excel can be a good uh, quantitative analytical statistical uh, sheet uh, that can hold data then we looked at uh, Microsoft Access and how do you build the data, what do you mean by objects, what do you mean by fields, okay, objects are those which are in the row informations, okay, fields are in the column information, these are more of attribute information whereas these are attributes in rows, okay. So then we looked at how you store and maintain a database, uh, finally we ended uh, it with how do you encrypt a database, how do you encrypt and secure a database which is extremely important in today's scenario. So uh, we have uh, looked at this and in the next class we will start uh, we will uh, look at more of uh, the database aspects and look in more details of how we handle a database okay till then have a nice time thank you.